We are in Alberta, Canada, just north of Fort McMurray with our friends at Finning Cat. Now, if you'll look very closely, you'll notice it is the middle of winter. And this is the trip I've been very excited about. You'd assume it gets slower in the winter, but it doesn't. It gets faster, more furious in the winter because the ground freezes and they can run the trucks as fast and as heavily loaded as possible. We just got badged up with Sincrude. Thank you to Sincrude for giving us permission to shoot out at the mine. Today we are gonna see the 798 AC, the new 797F, and 797B rebuilds. Some of the biggest trucks in the world are right out there moving material, and we're about to go see them. So with that, let's get in the truck, send it to the mine. at the Sincrude Mildred Lake mine. Right behind us is where they're bringing in the ore, the oil sand, and that's the beginning of the processing. So we have 797s, 400 ton trucks going back and forth and back and forth. We've seen a lot of 797Bs. We've seen a lot of 797Fs. Haven't found the 798 yet, but it's out here somewhere. Every, I mean, what is it been like every minute or so? Every minute, yeah. a mi every minute or so is a truck coming in here. And the amazing thing is the hopper can take multiple trucks at a time. So there's one, one dumping, a 797F, another one B backing in right now about to dump. 400 tons of material at a time. Here comes another truck. Behind me is a p &H 4100. Up above that is another shovel. Down right below is the shovel. We're surrounded by shovels and they are loading these beautiful cat trucks. Awesome. So welcome to Finning's Mildred Lake shop. This is right next to the Sincrude mine. So it's unique because they can drive the trucks in and then drive them back right out to the mine without any kind of transportation. It's, it's right next door. You'll notice behind me is a 797 right there, 797 there, 797. Yep, there's another 797. They have 797s outside a lot of big trucks in for all sorts of work. Here they're working on the frame, there they're replacing a radiator. These trucks are some of the most, I don't want to say abused, but used trucks in the world. And that's really just because of the conditions. They're working in mud, hot in the summer, really freezing cold in the winter. They're fully loaded, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is absolutely amazing. So let's check out a few individual projects and highlight some of the work Finning does here. Oh, wow. This right here is a D8 tailings dozer. You'll notice where the cooling package typically is up front. 
it's closed off. That's because this will be working in tailings, which is essentially a very wet, sloppy material. And it's covered a lot of times in water or a really, really fine mud. So this will be working a lot of times up to that level in material. It could get buried. When it gets buried, all of that material gets into the cooling package causing enormous problems. What they've done is they've put the cooling package on the top of the machine and have closed off the front so this can run in much deeper mud or water than your typical dozer without getting in trouble. Another amazing modification on this machine for safety is that there's an escape hatch on the top of the cab so that if the machine does get buried up to the cab and you can't open the doors, you can still go out the top and be safe just in case. That's obviously not to be used regularly. They're trying not to bury these machines, but if they do, this has a lot of safety features on it to keep the operator safe. It's a wild machine. I've never seen dozers modified like this before. My typical joke when they're doing something like this is that they're just changing the oil. They're not. To just a joke, they are doing the undercarriage on this machine. And you have to replace the undercarriage typically every 1,200 to 1,500 hours because it's working in water and sand and oily material. It's extraordinarily abrasive and corrosive at the same time but mostly abrasive, God forbid. So they're redoing the undercarriage and this machine will be back out in a matter of weeks. Here we're gonna explain to you using this whiteboard here how much bigger a 797 radiator is compared to me. So here is me right here. It looks just like you. Safety first, of course. And this, It is a 797 radiator here. See that? It's amazing how much bigger the radiator is compared to me. I wish we had one to actually show you, but thankfully I have this whiteboard to at least draw it out so you can see it up close. This is a brand new 797F. It was just assembled at the Fort Mackay facility, which we're going to later, brought down here. To transport it, they have to remove the outer tires, the outside two rear tires. They keep four on, take two off, and remove the dump body. Then here, they put the last tires on, marry it up with the dump body, and add the final accessories. So let's go up and check out what the heck the cab looks like. standing on the engine, putting in additional wiring harnesses for some of the, the additional features SIN crude requires. Over here, you can see the manifold come out there, then the exhaust goes into this after treatment system. This is a tier four machine. And then over there, the big red tanks, everybody always asks about our fire suppression. So Chase is at one end of the truck, the camera. I'm at the other end of the truck. Like we could, this is comfortable. We could throw a football to one another. We could play catch. This is a comfortable distance. You could have a whole wedding on top of this deck with like a mid-sized family. This, all of this, there's all sorts of different antennas. This looks like a, like a high rise building or one of those fake trees with all the antennas on top of it. Excuse the beeping, I have no idea what that is. But this right here, is considered a critical feature. It's a Sirius XM antenna, and they have another one at the other end of the truck so that they never lose service. So you can't bring your phone when you're running these machines for obvious reasons, it's dangerous. But what they found is, and of course, you wanna to listen to something. So they have Sirius XM in all of the brand new haul trucks. They allow their operators to listen to it. And not only is it enjoyable, it's way more enjoyable to listen to music or Howard Stern, of course, but it's a, a key safety feature because if you're running all night, that helps you stay awake while you're running this truck, which I think is brilliant. That's pretty cool. So this truck is destined to Syncrude. Syncrude, all of their trucks have Sirius XM.
driving a haul truck. But those are just the safe engine noises. I'm going at a safe speed. Of course. All right, this beeping. This beeping's enough for me. Loading these trucks is extremely important. You'll see two things on the side of this 798 behind me that highlights how important it is. So right there we have 410 tons. It's important not to exceed 410 because it's additional wear on the machine and it's potentially unsafe because it could make uh, create faults with the braking system, for example. It's also important not to underload it because that machine is going to the crusher. That's a lot of time and money spent to make that happen. You want to get it as close to that nominal payload as possible. And then that red indicator just above the 410 T sign there is to show the shovel operator exactly where the center of that box is. So that is where the shovel operator is aiming when he comes over and lets the load go within that truck. Wild. Does it look big? This cylinder and just one more on the other side can lift the entire 400 ton payload over and over and over again. When it's hot, when it's as cold as it gets. So it's running, their target is 90% availability, which means out of all the hours an entire year, 90% of those at least this truck is moving hauling material. Stand under this building here for a sec to get out of the snow. Yeah. For a moment. Much better. Now we're at Binning's Fort Mackay shop. That's their shop. This is the yard across the street where they're doing 797F assembly. We saw five trucks lined up here in the summer. It was beautiful. There wasn't snow here. Here we are, winter. More trucks getting assembled right behind me under that tarp and all around here. There's one being lifted right there. It's so cool. Everybody always asks the difference between a 6015 and a 6020. So this is a 6015 bucket right here. And here is the bucket for that brand new 6020B. Yeah, the cabin here, extremely spacious. I'm in one corner, Chase is in the other. You could... You could play hacky sack. You could play hacky sack in here for sure. Oh, I boofed it. Yeah, yeah, or you can could, you could almost hula hoop. It's a beautiful machine. Typically a CAT 6020B, like the machine behind me, is a very large machine. We've seen them at a coal mine, for example, where that is the production piece of equipment moving the majority of the dirt, material, whatever it is. However, this up here is really just a cleanup machine. This is not any kind of production machine whatsoever. This could never load a 797. It's important, it's for the odds and ends, but this is, are quite a rare machine up here because they need either way bigger or a little bit smaller, more versatile like the 6015 next door. So you can tell each one of these trucks is in a different stage of assembly. I believe they take just over a month to put together. All of these parts come in from the United States, 
they assemble them here. And then like we just saw at the Belgian Lake facility, if they're going to that mine, it's in crude, they'll go down to that facility for the final touches. If they're going to, to base or wherever they go, they'll be primarily assembled here. And then they go elsewhere, the mine, another finning facility for those little, little bitty touches. And then they're back to work, I guess, not back to work. Then they go to work. Such a cool place. Happy cab. It's happy because it's brand new. You can, it has the new 797F cab smell to it as well. It's nice. So this is the same cab we were in at the other shop, but obviously it's attached to some wood. 797B frame. The frame is designed for multiple lives. He said, roughly, how many hours until you do a frame up? They go between 70 and 80. So after about 70 to 80,000 frame hours, and we've said they're typically, if they're running 90% of the time, 6,500 to 7,000 hours per year. So that's over a decade of wear and tear. They break it all down. They rebuild the frame. They'll weld on the inside and the outside. They'll repaint it all and then they rebuild it from the ground up. So you can see this truck in rebuild so big, they put scaffolding, scaffolding on the truck so that they can access the different portions of it while they're rebuilding. I have sat on this truck before cut to the footage of me sitting on this truck, but I wasn't supposed to sit on it. Should I admit I sat on it? I may or may not have sat on this truck before. It was outside of the college, downtown Fort McMurray, but these trucks are so valuable that they said, hey, let's go bring it in for a rebuild. This is a 797A model, so it's probably late 90s, real early 2000s, maybe. They're rebuilding it and it'll go back out to the oil sands once they're done with it in roughly a month. It was looking a little rough when we saw it last. Okay. You'll see on a lot of these trucks, it says heavy metal equipment and rentals. That is a company we'll be with. We'll be doing a video on them specifically, but a lot of these new trucks in here belong not just to the mines, but to heavy metal equipment rental. What the mines have done is they would carry everything on their balance sheet, all of their equipment would be theirs. But in recent years, they've gone to a more flexible model where they're renting more equipment. So just like anywhere else where like a small quarry, you'll rent 745 articulated haul trucks. Up here, it's just bigger scale. They'll rent 793s, 797s. So this is going to one of the big oil sand mines, Syncrude, Suncor, one of them. However, it doesn't belong to them. It's a rental machine. D11, 854, D11, D11, 854, D11. For recovery, they had to pull something out. Like he was talking about, sometimes the trucks get bogged, 797s. So they'll pull it out with one or multiple D11s. Oil sand. This stuff blows my mind. What's it taste like? Huh? What's it taste like? It definitely smells. Thank you so much to Finning. Finning has showed us remarkable hospitality, has really made this entire week possible. So thank you to Finning. If you're looking for a job with an amazing equipment dealer, look no further than Finning. They're probably, I assume, hiring for all sorts of positions. Check them out. With that, we'll see you in the next one. Stay dirty, everybody.